All right, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another GEST Dota 1 match. This is Rogue Cat on the Scourge and Pallet on the Sentinel side. Don't know anything about these teams, but it's okay because my partner in crime will know it. He's like Robin to Batman, he's like Ludacris to JB, he's like Tentacle to those little girls. This is B Balling. Enjoy the podcast. JZ, you have no idea about hip hop. It would be more like Kanye to Jay Z or Jay Z to Kanye. No, I said Ludacris to JB. I know my, I know my Justin Bieber. <laughs> Got a baby. All right, let's unpause in three, two, one, go. Now with no viewers, because I was trying to sing "Baby." We have on Earthshaker being played by LW Chaos Knight being played by AC. Is that the name? I'm hoping that was their name, because I'm just reading how awkward it's have the middle of your name. Uh, EMZ playing the uh, uh, Rubik. We have Shadow Fiend being played by RCG, and lastly, but not least, we have XL3 on the Queen of Pain. Yeah, and going where the Scourge as I'll give you some background information about these teams in a minute, but Taji's playing the Dragonite, Gnosticism is playing the Vicious Prophet, or the Furin, or whatever he's called, Prophet. It's just like Ogre, Cla Ogre Axe and Ogre Club. Uh, Biz is playing the Crystal Man, KYT is playing Darkseer, and INTS, or Ints, is playing the Morphling. Now, Neolution uh, just got picked up by Rokat Trust. They've been a consistent Thailand Dota 1 team, probably the best Thai Dota 1 team thus far. Um, for the only Thai Dota 1 team. Tyler. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I remember casting a game of Mango, and they did pretty well. And they know, I know they're a Thai team as well. But yes, uh, there's pretty good Thai teams. But as Beatballing said, this is probably the best of them. And we're gonna see a good old Crystal Maiden Dragonite dueling top. Every time we see Dragonite on Southern East Asian game, it is gonna go to the mid lane. But this one, it's Morphling because he's got the Strength Morph or Agility Morph, and he is absolutely the most uh, insane hero in the mid lane. I gotta say. Probably the best here on the mid lane, at least this in the current game. I've seen it in a Dota 1, in a Southeast Asian Dota 1 match ever. Oh. So, this isn't a common thing, but TI2 has changed a lot of minds, even in the Dota 1 scene, as uh, Morphling versus Shadow Fiend. This matchup uh, could go either way, but once Shadow Fiend does pick up blows into races, Morphling will have to be careful because he will have low HP. Meanwhile, uh, just go back to Pacific Palette. They've sort of been consistently uh, consistent in terms of not being that good. But Fisher <laughs> Dragonite right off at. <laughs> And another <laughs> chaos is going to come in. Can they get a right click in? No, Rubik is going to be able to have one more in. Dragonite does not. Oh, he did have a cell. He's going to pop it right now. But yeah, Pacific Palette been uh, pretty consistently good. bad. Big flames from uh, B balling, not from me. Meanwhile, we have on the bot lane here Creep skipping from the Darks here. Re not really going to handle the lane against Queen of Pain, considering that she actually got a double damage and forced out the first salve usage. Very quick salve usage against Darks here. But Creep skipping like this will force Queen of Pain to last under his tower and tank a lot of a lot of damage as well. You can see that Queen of Pain only having four CS. We are on the third wave of the game. Back in the mid lane though, Morphling, he is going to do a lot of physical harass, and you got to be extremely careful if you are allowing the Morphling get a couple more right clicks on you, waveform a couple more right click afterwards, you are gonna just lose first blood. So Shadow Fiend gotta be extremely, extremely careful. The Shadow Fiend is just like, why did I sign up for this stuff? I mean, I'm I'm 2-0, oh. meanwhile Morphling is 8-2. He's just completely outlining me, but once he picks up Shadow Rays, it should be A-OK, -okay, and he's starting to use Shadow Rays a bit more. But then you know, on the top lane, Rubik's just gonna hit on some trolls. Uh, that would be pretty awkward. Have you ever hit on some trolls, Luminous? Every day and night. Every, every day and night. Yes. YouTube trolls. Yes. Trolls yes. everywhere. Unite. <laughs> Me and Morphe get Shadow Fiend. I mean, once Shadow Fiend, he's starting to use raises, but he still has abysmal CS. But I think once he starts getting his battle, did he go for fast follow build? No, he's using a salve, so he's still, well, he's 100 gold away, so once he picks that up, waveform could be used once again. Try to get him back in the midst of everything, but Shadow Fiend should be fine. Follow's gonna be on its way. He's gonna pick up levels. He, everything should be fine and dandy for this Shadow Fiend. I don't know, man. Morphling's already got his bottle being delivered to him, and Morphling, I mean, Shadow Waves might have, uh, you know, powerful potency in terms of pushing lane, but Morphling, not only is he creep killing Creep Wave, he's gonna have a higher accuracy in terms of killing a hero, and of course, a right click for Morphling will force Shadow Fiend to go back even further. I'm gonna, I'm gonna expect Morphling to control this Creep Equilibrium a lot better, and really force Shadow Fiend, uh, as hand in terms of bottle crawling a lot harder, and the runes will go towards Morphling if he wants them, and of course, this being a sudden East Asian game, nobody cares about going for the runes. Oh, back in mid lane, there's gonna be a Nova Gank, where's the bite, where's the bite, the teleport in with the Sprout, oh, Crystal Midden trying to get the red one raise, oh, two raise, the tower hit! Bring Crystal made him very, very low, he wants it, but not gonna be enough. Man, Shadow Fiend surviving against a three-man gank. That's the alpha desk, I gotta say. <laughs> a little bit of uh, mistiming, as this is an online tournament, but I'm, I'm gonna say lol to all your talk, all your crazy shenanigans about creep equilibrium and creeps. 
because this is a Southeast Asian game, they will just raise everything and just follow Crow it up. And they will just say, you know, why hit creeps when you can hit heroes with raises? I mean, what, what's the point? As there's going to be no action on the top lane, this minimap's a bit deceptive, but Shadow Fiend uh, going to get some backup from the Earthshaker. Will Chris may be in a bit of trouble? Nah, the damsel in distress will not be in distress so far. At least not yet. Uh, we do have a haste rune in the Morphling Spado, so Shadow Fiend, again, got to be extremely, extremely careful. A teleport in from Nature's Prophet, who will probably do the job. Uh, do we have any tangle left here on the Shadow Fiend? No, he does not. Is he going to go for it? But Shadow Fiend, just the fact that he's level 5 and the fact that he could be threatening for the raises. Look at the sea rays keeping Morphling back. He's going to pop his haste rune. He's going to have to pop the haste rune very time soon and start healing it up. There's just no ganks towards Shadow Fiend mid, and if you haven't watched a recent cast, uh, you can check it on B-Balling's channel, where there's also a Shadow Fiend game and, and a Dota 1 game. Yeah, you, you gotta keep ganking him to have a chance, but back on the top lane here, a single fissure will put that, yeah, oh, damsel in distress, no. and now Shadow Fiend is gonna have a field day when the raises, look at that! The X and the C Ray is gonna get the kill, where are they gonna go? Strength Morphing already being popped, and, oh, whoa, wrong direction, Mr. Morphling! Uh, but Rubik coming in here, and now Prophet in an awkward angle. Man, I gotta just say, uh, Shaker being paired up with Shadow Fiend, they're doing so much. And this Nature's Prophet, he doesn't have high levels of TP, so it's gonna have a long duration. Dude, they scout him out. Uh-oh, he did. <laughs> he ain't gonna be in Rush Hour 3, you can say that the least. As Fisher coming in once again, Telekinesis gonna set up up for the raise. Oh. There goes the double raise as they come in and... Basically, per usual, I'm right, Luminous is wrong. Shadow Fiend owns more Fiend mid lane once he gets level 3. So, uh... Shouts to Luminous. Yeah, meanwhile, we'd have Darkseid dying to the poison on the bot lane. I didn't say he, he, he's, he's gross. <coughs> I he said, said the gang's Morphling gross. The, lane. the Morphling does control the lane, except he, he got raised. Why he no Ray for min and harass? I don't know. Back on the top lane here, CK 29 13 to the Dragonite and 9 and 0. Oh, this guy has not even seen creeps. He's, he's you know, withdraw or something because CK is having all of it. He's having a pro post-traumatic stress disorder, he does not want to see those creeps getting so right in front of him. Meanwhile, Chaos Knight is just has no... He is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, he has no qualms about killing these creeps left and right. As this game, I'm a bit disappointed. Five minutes in, I expect at least five kills. But only three kills, come on guys. Or 25. 25. Hey, I think uh, there was a game where I think like 15 kills happened in the 5 minutes. What, what was it? There was a Dota 2 One of those mouse board games. On the top lane here, Reality Rift, the toss back here. Where's the Fissure? Where's the Fissure? There's a Fissure. Where is it? Yeah, okay, finally. Nice two-man Fissure against the Dragonite. Dragonite's gonna die to the right click here from the Fissure. Me on Crystal made a still trap. Are they gonna go? Are they gonna go? No, no, they're like three-man gangbang. Can see him. It's not fair, so we'll wait. And one thing I do gotta say is that the PMI Earthshakers always get it done. Uh, in more ways than one, but it looks like uh, Crystal Lane's just gonna back off. They always form their Blink Dagger up, and they always manage to be in position to at least get uh, landing fissures off, and they roam quite effectively, so uh, shots to the PNR Shakers everywhere. But meanwhile, Earthshaker just gonna stay in the shadows. Crystal Lane is just like, where are you, my handsome knight? Rescue me from this terrible, terrible mess that I found myself in. As Dragonite is going for the very, very uncommon Double Bracer build. Yeah, Dragonite Double Bracer, one of them being uh, turned into a drums later on. The other one just says, I need some damn HP. Fire Breath gonna be used. They have so much kind of way to initiate a Reality Rift. They could just fidget flat out and then use uh, Telekinesis to pull them back. Oh, man. No, Haste Rune, never mind. What, 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 back in the mid lane here, Haste Rune on Shadow Fiend. Oh, one raise. Oh, wait for him, wait for him to sprout. And that, there you go, wait for him, just wait for him. He missed one raise. He missed a second raise. No, he didn't miss it. The Strain Forward, the Fable, not gonna do enough. And that's what Strength uh, Morphling does in mid lane. So, uh, final no, Luminous is right and B-Balling is wrong. Look at that ownage. Yeah! <laughs> as uh, when Luminous screams like that, you know that this game is on the level of TI2 status. As KS9 is going to escape with the Silver HP, Kirsten Lane too slow, as uh, she's just. Ice is not very fast. Ice moves very slowly. But yeah, this game clearly on TI2 status as Luminous starts screaming like that. Yeah, man. And also, uh, uh, like like uh, like ice, my my Warcraft three is also a little bit slow. So do do watch out in terms of uh, slowing and, and stopping. Uh, but also, one thing to point out on the bot lane that we haven't talked too much about is Darkseer is getting owned. He's got 31 CS to Queen of Pain's 37. That might not seem like the biggest uh, advantage or disadvantage, but Queen of Pain's controlling the lane very very well despite the creep skipping, and he's got a kill against the Darkseer. You don't generally see too much of that so very very happy at uh, how how well queen of pain is controlling the mid lane and once again if you look at shadow fiend's item on mid it's gonna be a low dark's edge build we've seen it last time uh, again casting v balling's game check him out on the his youtube channel we, we saw the exact same build let's see if he's gonna be as effective with the build here yeah 
Queen of Pain, Shadow Strike just owns Dark Seer like nobody's business. I mean, he's slow down when Surge wears off. Uh, damage over time when Dark Seer doesn't have a ring of health just yet is just going to be very, very brutal. And Dark Seer is bottle curling it up. Meanwhile, mid lane, Morphling, uh, 28 and 7. Shadowfiend, on the other hand, has taken to the jungle. He has 40 uh, CS, so he's going to hide his core staff for a bit. He's surely going to go back to the lane, uh, but not really too sure why he's jungling at this point. Yeah, maybe a little bit afraid crossing the river, considering that he is a very, very easy hero gank, and if he is gank, he has to rebuild his souls up. So, uh, one of the more pricey of death, if you are dying as a carry, is Shadow Fiend. A lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, kind of sudden East Asian players, especially Pinoys, when they're going for this kind of low Darth's Edge build, they actually just hide their entire build. Like, they put the quarter staff on the Courier, or put it in the base, and they don't want to show it until the full low Darth's Edge is finished, and then they come out with a huge Requiem Soul, or, you know, whatever... Uh, low Darth's Edge gank. I'm very surprised that he is actually holding it because, to be honest, the 10 attack speed as we on the bot lane, we do have, uh, well, the right click coming on. Uh, Darkseid knows he's not gonna get the- Oh, Wrath of Nature comes oh. in right now. Vacuum and the right click gonna do the job. Now he wants a little oh, bit more. Rich. He wants a Darkseer. He's damage blocking. Yes. Oh, he's gonna get the kill. Yes, he is. He dies to the poison. No deny here from the Prophet, but damn, that was so good. So nice, correct uh, positioning, correct decision making by the Darkseer, knowing he's not gonna run away and went for straight for the kill. He's got it back on the top lane here. Dragonform gets pop. He's gonna pop his. Oh, reality riff here. Where's the stun? Where's the stun? Not under tower range. The return stun. Crystal Maiden. Where's your Nova? There's a Nova. Fissure on the right side. That's gonna hit on two. Just Fissure. Just Fissure. They're going for the chain stun. They are gonna get the chain stun kill. Crystal Maiden. Now it's gonna go down. Telekinesis. Fable. Yeah. Man, this game. Massive amount of counter gang 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 gang. Still not 25 kills yet, but very, very good game. Yeah, it's not like these ganks are sloppy like we've seen in other games. These ganks are pretty well coordinated. The only problem is Darkseer is just like, lol, I have Iron Shot, I do a billion damage to you. What can you do about that? And really, you can't really do too much. Meanwhile, Morphling is just going to fire up. And right now, uh, Sentinel has eight kills. And I think what's important to know is that this Chaos Knight is actually doing stuff. He's getting farm, he's getting some levels, and he has one kill to his name. And this could be trouble for the Scourge later on. Yeah, man. Really, I, I know this is the third time we've been recommending it. It's like a tale of two cities. Go watch b cast first in his channel, <laughs> and then go and then watch this cast because there's a lot of mirror, there's a lot of differences, and it's a very good learning experience. If you're going to watch two game, that's not really a part of series. These are the two games to watch, at least judging from how this game's going so far. Oh, Black on the bottom lane here. Queen of Pain on the bottom lane. Vacuum going to suck the Queen of Pain back in. Can she get one more right click? I am doing so much work, but what a body block by Queen of Pain. Uh, surged all the while, but still holding Darkseer in place. Really, really nicely done, but keep in mind, Scourge did get the tower through the power of Creep Skipping. But a uh, Pyrrhic big Pyrrhic victory for the Quap, but still, they got a kill, and more importantly, they have a huge experience lead. Crystal Main level 4, because Crystal Main cannot do too much. Ooh, back in the middle here, Shadow Fiend goes down about to 40 HP-ish, gonna be fine bottom on top here. Nice body blocking on the Crystal Maiden and Fable, one more hit's gonna do it. Oh, one more hit, one more hit, yeah, Salve attempt. On the Crystal Maiden, now she's gonna down 100 gold as well. The rotation comes in from the Earthshaker. Earthshaker being all places at once, I feel like, just so effective roaming. Mana for Grand Magus, just one spell. Fable, he does have three charges on the Magic Wand. Dragonite being very, very defensive. He's gonna go for a full Bracer build. This is the third Bracer he's trying to finish. Bracer is just one of the most cost inefficient item, um, you know, in the 20, 25 minutes in the game. But right now, you gotta just survive. So damn cost efficiency, you just gotta get HP. I think Scourge knows if they hold out with the power of Darkseer, with the power of Morphling, with the power of Dragonite, they will be able to win. So right now they just need to survive the early game onslaught, but that also means that to protect their towers. And keep in mind, Sentinel has not taken any of the towers thus far. Darkseer being harassed once again on that bottom lane. But the Scourge can hold out, they should have the advantage. But keep in mind, we've seen games where Shadow Fiend does out carry harder carries than Morphling, harder carries than even Dragonite. I mean, it's pretty scary, but against a Dark Sir as well, it's going to be difficult to say the least for just. But keep in mind, this Chaos Knight is getting some farm. There's going to be a Dragon farm initiation. No, he's just going to turn into a Dragon because he likes that farm. And Dark Sir, or the Dragon Knight, is going to venture a bit further back. They're going to kill the Rubik at the very least. Frostbite holding the Chaos Knight in place. Wrath of Nature coming in, splashing so much shit. Morphin coming in from the rear. Adaptive Strike doing all of 30 damage. And. Chaos Knight's gonna be able to escape. And pushing him away, giving him assist. A uh, Crystal Maiden wants to run in, but she's simply too slow. Still going for it. There's gonna be a four second stun. The tower doing some big work. No teleportation comes in to really do the job. Here's the strength floor. He still wants it. He still wants a waveform. He's gotta really cut through the trees. Oh no, no trees being destroyed. They still see the Chaos Knight, but really shouldn't be chasing any more oh, teleportation yellow. coming from the yellow. Who's yellow? That's a question. That's a shaker though. Queen of Pain in position as well. Still looking for the fissure. Nice sprout block. Trying to TP out just fissure for the love of God. There's a fissure. 
and that's going to be another kill for the Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, waveform here against two hero. There's going to be a stun. There's a two second stun. Where's the raise? Shadow Fiend Ultimate. There's one raise. Oh, Sonic Wave. Second raise. Right clicks. Nicely played. Queen of Pain being everywhere. This team, this game is all. This really truly sudden East Asian Dota. Mass amount of mobility, diving past towers, out of position, and really making it fun to cast. Lewis, all I can say is that you'll never hear me crying about uh, five kill or three kills in the first five minutes, or even two kills ever again. Yeah. Because games will just shape up like this in the Southeast Asian Dota scene. You know, Crystal Bay is going to try to venture forward. Here comes the teleported by Dark Green, who is the Dark Sir. Can he kill the Chaos Knight with a vacuum? Sprout being used. Oh, Nature's probably coming for the Gex, but he's going to get Requiem of Sold right all over his face. And a Crystal Maiden kill as well. The Shadow Fiend does so much damage. This Dark Sir, they should probably be very aggressive, but they're not able to accomplish too much. And there goes another kill. This is looking to be very, very problematic for the Scourge. Wow, that Requiem so into the raise against the CM was very, very well played. Showing that this player extremely finesse on that Shadow Fiend control. And again, Shadow Fiend, one of those uh, heroes, if you're playing it very well, you are just going to go godlike. But if you messed up, you look like Luminous Scrub. So, uh, very, very happy that he's not looking like Luminous Scrub uh, so far. On the top lane here, Shaker, one thing he's doing so far is ganking. He is going to gank his way up to Arcane Boots. Meanwhile, Dragonite finds himself a wild Rubik. Can he actually take this Rubik? Big though. Rubik says, I'll fight back. Telekinesis backwards. Wrath of Nature comes in. Search back out. And one more hit. No! He's gonna survive. Fissure comes in right now. Shadow Fiend, one raise, four to kill. Second raise, no dirt raise. Unfortunately, the Fissure block's so good that it traps the other hero. Meanwhile, we have a teleport in from uh, Nature's oh, Prophet. Rubik. Here we go, Rubik. Wow. No <laughs> oh freaking way. No oh freaking Rubik still survives, and the right click comes in, and that's gonna be the kill. Beautiful sudden East Asian game. Meanwhile, dive on the top lane here. Look at how low the Shadow Fiend is. He's in vis. He's trying to juke. He's gonna juke oh, just Chris fine. Me. He wants a CM. He wants a CM. Just one hit. One hit. No, oh, the no for the tower shot. Oh. Oh man, nothing else. <laughs> this game is hilarious. This is gonna be another teleported by Pick. It looks like Dark Green and the Yellow are gonna meet up in the jungle. Will they go on the Earth Shaker? Uh, Dragon Knight, can he get the Dragon Tail off on the Chaos Knight? I don't know if they have enough damage to bring him down. This Chaos Knight is so far as a Vanguard. They're going to stun him, do a bunch of damage to the Iron Shell, but even with level 4 Iron Shell, there's always so much they can accomplish. They're actually going to go on the offensive. Will Echo Slam be used? He's getting in position, vacuum sucking everybody back in. Dragon Tail being once used, used once again on the Chaos Knight. Echo Slam finally being used, holding everybody in place. Nature's Prime teleports back in. Will they get the kill? Looks like Yellow is the first one to fall. That is the Earthshaker. Chaos Knight going to be holding in place as a 4 second bolt onto the Iron Shell. DK, that's huge in terms of reducing DPS output. It looks like these three breaks is going to help Dragonite survive, and that's going to be the that engagement. As meanwhile, it looks like Queen of Pain wants to get in on this action. So much damage going on, and Queen of Pain's just like, where am I at? And all the while, Dragonite trying to escape. Dragonite's definitely going to die. Chaos Knight does it off the mana, and Dragonite cannot teleport out. Queen of Pain picks up mega kill all over the map. Kills mega steal. Happening. 26 kills. My god. Yeah, uh, but we're at this point right now, we're 19 to 7. Sentinel having the biggest lead of their life. Uh, probably exaggeration, but a huge lead in this point. And considering that Morphling isn't a hero that can carry them back, at least not in this given moment, he still needs his shotgun. Will he find the kill? There's Adaptive Strike. He's waiting for the blink. He sees a blink. Wait for him in. Right click. He's gonna get the kill, but three seconds on out telekinesis. There's a Nova. Where's the bite? Right click coming in. The illusion rune gets split. Oh, he's going in for it. Here's the bite. Fissure again. Such. And the tower working on the crystal maiden goes down. That shaker is the biggest cock block ever. Don't take him to a bar, because he ain't going to be your wingman. <laughs> Lewis, with uh, valuable knowledge dropped on all of you young lads trying to impress some young lasses early on. As the courier dies, Shadow Fiend is such a dick. As the Dark <laughs> going to have to run away, has a Planeswalker cloak and only a bottle of Darkstar. We usually see it so much more farm, but he's been constantly ganking. And good on him for constantly ganking, but he can't really do too much because he's just been dying left and right. He's going to go back to jungle, try to farm up. You know, Dragon Knight, only level 9, 3 braces to his name, at least he's not been dying too easily. Morphling try to pick up his farm slowly, but surely, one thing that is important to notice is that even though Sentinel has a 12 kill lead and has a massive experience lead, they've only been able to take one tower. If the Scourge can't hold on, if the Sentinel let them hold on, then Scourge will have a chance. Yeah, a uh, very minuscule chance though. Look at, let's quick do a quick item check. Prophet has a Oblivion Staff. Uh, ah. Boots, <laughs> Dragon Knight has three Bracer and a Boots. Still no upgrade here. And meanwhile, there's a Boots of Travel finish and a Lodar's Edge. And here we go. Here we go. Dun dun. Dun dun. Oh, I think that was a little bit too quick, but it don't matter. Requiem and the, of course, 
screen and paint gonna get the kill. And right now, we talked about how Morphling could, in theory, carry them back in the game, but he's got Wraith Bands and a Ghost Scepter. That not really doesn't look like carry items to me. I guess the motto Pacific Pal is if you go for an extremely mobile lineup with the uh, Morphling and Darkseer, we'll just out mobile you. And we have Earthshaker, the anti mobile, anti mobility hero, just locking people in place for fissures. And Earthshaker is just performing admirably. He's only 1200 gold away from finishing his Blink Dagger, considering he has exactly five creeps to his name. That's pretty impressive. And he's going to be able to pick up some more tower gold in the midst of all this. And Chalfie split pushing with the Boots of Travel. Going to be able to outpush this Nature's Prophet, especially since Nature's Prophet cannot do too much at this point in the game, considering he's so under farm. This is going to looking very, very good for the Sentinel side. And they really need to make this happen because they are still on a clock. Yeah, Shadow Fiend hitting for nearly 200 damage at this point, not factoring his, of course, uh, Voldemort's aura right here. But here we go. Are they going to take a fight? No. Puts on the Iron Shell. A couple more right clicks. The entire uh, creep wave's down. Are they going to put on even more pressure? At this point, with the Shadow Fiend backing, or with the Shaker backing up the Shadow Fiend, they're not going to be needing to be afraid. Are they going to blink in Sonic Wave? No Sonic Wave just yet. The Sea Rays bring him low. The last right click from the Queen of Pain. Gonna get the kill. Look at how easy it's in. They could go back once the Fissure's off cooldown. Or maybe they'll go in right about now. Crystal Maiden. Oh, it's, it's the... It's the alpha female versus the maiden distress, and the maiden survives at least for right now. The Sonic Wave. Chain stuns on this Morphling, perfectly placed chain stuns, but he's gonna go scepter out. The crowd will boo heartily, but will they be able to kill this Morphling? One more blink in by the Queen of Pain. Does not have too much mana to work with. Will she be able to blink in? Morphling or Waveform being used by the Rubik against him. A couple more clicks. They really want this Morphling. Can they get one more hit? Yes, Queen of Pain gets it. And what? Great play by Ascendal, just consistently locking people in place. And it looks like Dragonite might be the next one to follow. They're chain stunning to their heart's content. Dragonite being locked in place as suddenly but ch or slowly but surely Scourge is starting to lose some of their composure. They're teleporting in one by one, and this might cost them the game. As Echo Slam being used, looks like the Scourge at least get one kill onto Orange, which is the Rubik, the least important hero on the Sentinel side. But still, one kill for four. I mean, Good trade, right? Uh, well, yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a bit. They're biting on the Chaos Knight, but the Chaos Knight is just so tanky at this point because he hasn't died so far. 272 crits. Despite that he's at orange health right now, he could play so much more aggressive. Just waiting on the top. He's going for the Crystal Maiden. Oh, he misses, but here comes the uh, Succubus to finish the job. There's Vacuum. Chaos Knight finally dies. Sonic Wave, and now Darkseer is on the run. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, not gonna get it all. Getting, getting completely trapped on that cliff. Double kill on the Queen of Pain. Haven't really talked about her item builds, but Lincoln Sphere, generally not the best item if you're having such an offensive lead. But considering the situation, it doesn't matter what she's got. She could go for Dagon and just really own. Uh, even Lincoln Sphere could allow her to play so much more aggressively, blink into tower, eating stuns like no one's business, and, and still doing a lot of punch mention return. She's level yeah. 16. Considering that Crystal Maiden is just one free combo, she's walking 200 gold. I think Queen of Pain is one of the best heroes at keeping people down. And if she dies, she'll let the Scourge give one chance to breathe. And that might give Scourge an opening to get themselves back in the game. But considering she went for the defensive build rather than the extremely aggressive build, she really does not want to give up her bounty. She wants to keep pressuring people. Oh, that, that. Nice, nice, nice jazzy overtones in the background. But meanwhile, there's going to be engaging on the top lane. Shaofin pops a little edge. Will he be able to? No, Dragon Tail is going to interrupt the stun. They're going to be able to kill Shaofin. That's a pretty good start, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah, a long way. Shaofin was a long way from home, and he was trying to rely on his low Dark Edge, but Crystal Maiden says low to that one. Uh, Queen of Pain gonna put a little bit of pressure on the mid lane again. At this point, with the Lincoln Sphere finish and the fact that she has Blink, she could just sit in this part of the map all day long and really will put just so much pressure. And suddenly, if you're Crystal Maiden, you gotta walk with your teammate. And really, they are getting slightly annoyed if they walk with Bottom the teammate. Lane, morphling, 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 dies. All right, cool story. Huh? All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, I will I will let my sister answer the phone. And then uh, keep on talking you back in the mid lane Fissure here as we do get pretty good chain stun and then an Echo, or not an Echo, an Enchant Totem 4D stun. Very, very nicely played. I want to emphasize, as I don't not know what Elo means, so uh, I think uh, it might be some friendly banter, it might be a bit of trash talk, you never really know. Because you can't really understand Tagalog, uh, at least I can't. Anno really sounds like... It's not like the Illusion is a bad team. They're a very good Dota team. They're probably one of the top three Dota 1 teams in the Southeast Asian region. I thought well, you just I mean, said they're consistently not. bad. No, the Illusion Pacific Palette is consistently bad. They ain't, they ain't bad here. They are winning so hard. And that they're bad they're asses here. It up. No, the Illusion is one of the top Dota 1 teams in the Southeast Asian region, and this just speaks to how well Pacific Palette is playing. They are playing out of their minds at the moment. 
Yeah, it's very, very good to have a momentum based hero. And again, when you get the momentum rolling, like Queen of Pain, like that Shadow Fiend with the Lothar's Edge, and his mobility go gank and counter gank everywhere in this Chaos Knight, again, one of those Veer mobile hero, he is not going to die as he's get rolling like this. I really don't know how Scourge is going to come back. Well, they're really going to have to get some sort of contribution from Nature's Power. Maybe the Orchid will be able to seal them some ganks, but the problem is that the heroes on the Stone Star are so mobile. Shadowfiend's gonna run out, Dragon Knight, double damage rune. If Dragon Knight can somehow turtle it, they just need to turtle to their heart's content, but considering Darkstar's died so much, it's really gonna be difficult, considering Wall is not gonna be at a high level. Uh, he is level 12, but he does not, he went for a Void Stone. Not really too sure what build he's going for. It might be for a Bloodstone, might even be for a Lincoln Sphere. This is not a common item build for Darkstar, even the Southeast Asian scene, but considering Darkstar's banned so often, uh, I don't really know what the correct build on him is in the Southeast Asian scene. Oh, back on the top lane here, Shadow Fiend, one race. He's, he's just juking, he's playing. Do they have oh, dust yes. detection? Ah, oh, he thinks he's cool. He thinks that's Lothar's Edge, but he's screw. He pops his BKB, he wants Ultus, and they'll just right click him back. Well, you know, that was cool. As haha, -ha, I think uh, this is not really boring on uh, classy behavior, but this is Southeast Asian Dota 1 as uh, these teams. Play with a lot of heart, to say the least, but it might be a Pyrrhic victory for the Scourge. They're going to lose their bottom tier 2 tower without any defense whatsoever. And Chaos Knight should be approaching his BKB very rapidly. Picks up the Mytho Hammer about 800 gold away from finishing that BKB. And once he picks up the BKB, I think the Sentinel will be able to get the push going. Considering they have a tanky, magically immune initiator, it's going to be so difficult to stop. And Earthshaker has picked up a Blink Dyer. This could be huge. Well, it's going to start on the bot lane right now. Fissure is going to just tip in for to kill Crystal Maiden. It says, no, no, please, no. Blink in here, Reality Rift. The Crystal Maiden ultimate. Just for the 20 minutes slow. It's a very, very good technique when you're getting ganked like that. You use your ultimate and hopefully oh, crash your computer. But 700 that crit. And wow. No chance. Really, really starting to go from bad to worse. As now, the racks are in full, or the tower is going to be in full reach. Shaofi's going to teleport in. Does not even have souls to work with. It's just like, I don't even give any sorts of crap. It's going to hit the racks, and this might be the beginning of the end for the Scourge side. They're really, really, really just got out mobilized. Like, Earthshaker was by far the MVP. Yeah, Man. no, no kidding, by far. He just really allowed his uh, team to really function in every single lane. Got his Chaos Knight very farm, prevented multiple deaths to the Shadow Fiend. Uh, and even indirectly, Queen of Pain benefited from this. She Sure, she did not get any ganks or counter gank from the Shaker, but the fact that the Shaker prevented enemies from getting a lot of kills and helped his teammates get a lot of kills, the level discrepancy really helps Queen of Pain to kind of mold down everybody at this stage of the game. So yeah, the Shaker, absolutely MVP. And I'm glad we're in agreement. And of course, you talked about it. 5 CS in certain point has Arcane, Blink Dagger, and Point Booster. Ugh. That is brutal. That is brutal. But will they be able to pick out the shelf here at the very least? Uh, I think if they manage to get the proper wall, they could do something. But the problem is that Earthshaker will be in position. The PNR Shakers are notorious for staying a screen away from any sort of engagements and then walking forward and then getting off the perfect echo slam even if it's not perfect it still does a nice job in terms of disrupting the team fight with those dark Seer illusions providing more damage for that earth shaker echo slam to work with it's really not going to be very pretty if he manages to get the perfect wall at all and considering the heroes i mean chaos Knight has an assault or is working on his assault cures has a hyper stone to work with and slowly but surely the scourge is getting reached the question is how will they die yeah, this, the, you can see that Scourge right now, they're so afraid. Shadow Fiend just poured out to the top lane, and despite of that, they don't want to take a 5v4. Prophet could TP in any time, but they're just afraid of Shaker. They don't have enough magical immunity to deal with that huge Echo Slam. The Morphling Replicate will get picked off. Reality Riff in, oh, Fable! Yeah, there is going to be the kill. Mowing that one down, and again, Shadow Fiend is just slowly, you know, by himself pushing up top. And it's going to be another Orchid build on the uh, Prophet Orchid build. Very, very good if you could finish it early. This is not a good game for Orchid, considering that his team and himself is not doing too well. And now you could silence somebody, but they'll just laugh and right click you down because they could do that. KSI is going to initiate onto the Dragon Knight. No, he's going to get trapped. Frostbite, Echo Slam being used, disrupting everybody. Dragon Knight somehow managed from BKB, but. XL3, the Sonic Wave, managed to kill so many heroes, and there's going to be another kill on uh, the Crystal Main. 37 to 12. This game is looking pretty much over as Queen of Pain is beyond godlike. Just checking out his score really fast. 18 and 2. This is ridiculous, ridiculous 
ridiculous killing power from this Queen of Pain. Oh, meanwhile, we do have the run on the Morph. He's gonna be fine. Dragon Knight out of Dragon Form this way. He Dragon Tail, right clicking. Wave for man. Are they gonna get the kill? No, she's so tanky. Blinks back out. Shadow Fiend comes in right now. Blink, Enchant Totem, Requiem, so woo! That's gonna be the kill there. And, and that that's should gonna be, the, be game. the game. Yeah, that should be the game. At this point, everybody <laughs> alive on the Sentinel. Did anybody die? Nope. Nobody nope. died. 52 kills in uh, 28 minutes. So normally, normally, in a game like this, Mr. Loomis would be like, oh man, this game is not well played, let's not upload it, but fuck that. People say that sometimes we want to just see a good, unwarranted... I think this game was well played. Yeah, it was well played. It was fun Dota, it was back and forth. I think Scourge just, I think it just got into Scourge's head as they just started teleporting in one by one. And that happens against a mobile team, you start to just get locked down as Darkseid is going to take the fall once again. I think Scourge played well for the first, you know, five or seven minutes, and then it just got into their heads. They realized, oh, we're just gonna die so easily. We have a huge experience disadvantage. I mean, all these heroes are getting picked off. Queen of Pain finally dies, but it's gonna be all for naught as Chaos Knight critting for 834 damage. This is ridiculous. Chaos Knight finally making an impact. This is what I wanted to see for a while. And you guys, I mean, Chaos Knight, one of those heroes, like very much so like game, if you get advantage, you are just gonna keep your advantage. Oh, he's gonna tank the tower. Oh, he's gonna get a three second stun and just, <sighs> Walk out there with this horse making whatever sound they make. <laughs> Is that the sound they make? Sure, sure, bro, sure. Yeah, man. I just know horses. So you like, <laughs> that's what you sound like. <laughs> as Morphling picked up four kills, as uh, so Morphling's gonna dominating. Yeah. Morphling's gonna do a comeback. Not, he's gonna pick up his uh, E Blade in about, you know. Five more minutes of farm. He has 1800 gold. As this is clearly putting on the form of bad manners. As Pacific Pallet, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Pacific Pallet, the Chaos Knight, just really trolling the hell out of this Dragonite. He knows he's faster. He knows he's not gonna die. Oh, maybe. Maybe he's out. Yeah, he's gonna die here, right? Yeah, there you go. And now he's gonna ha ha, probably in all chat. No, he's not. And now level three Dragon form. I mean. Uh is there, is there a slight chance he'll come back? They have a Prophet. They have a BKB well, Dragonite. Sonic Wave gonna be able to clean up the Dragonite. One more blink hits. BKB is finally used. Crystal Mane gonna be able to provide all the support that Dragonite needs. I mean... That sounds so wrong, by the way. It's possible, but keep in mind, Shadow Fiend has been like two out of every five engagements. That's true. That's true. Yeah, if the Shadow Fiend and Squad likes to hold hand and just go for the late game kill, they, they, they could easily do so. Just go all five top. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain will be just picking up people here and there, and they see the Prophet. Prophet, better TP the hell out now. Yeah, there you go. Correct response, or he did. Yeah, and it's pretty cool to see Shadow Fiend sort of being played as a brood mother. Just sort of split pushing it up. Uh, raises kill crews faster than spiders. Well, here's the thing. He might be like a brood mother, but he comes in sometimes with an ult, and you never know when it's coming. So that's pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty... Pretty difficult to play against, but here comes the final killing blow. They do have the Earthshaker ultimate. They don't. They, they don't even need uh, their Chaos Knight. I mean, they they'd like to have him, but they don't even really need him. The Scourge do not have any items at all, and they're gonna have to defend this like I they never. Man, they got they got some BKB BKB Dragon form with Frost Epicenters. Sixteen. I, you did mention that. Mm. I just did not listen. So vacuum wall and, and frost epicenters might be a thing. Shadow Fiend, Shadow Fiend illusion should be kept alive. And here we go, Nova on a couple guys. Vacuum gets stolen. Uh oh, perhaps a counter wombo combo as vacuum, echo slam, requiem soul, sonic wave. I could get ugly. Should yep, you get real? Since he has move speed of eight hundred thousand, is gonna be able to get back to the lane. He pops phantasm. He just wants to one shot somebody. He's gonna go in from the. Uh, the middle lane, can he one-shot anybody? Said to will it scout out anybody? Can he get Dragonite? Here comes the four-second stun. Here comes the Reality Rift as well. Does not even need to cast Reality Rift. Chaos Knight just tanking up so much damage. One hit on the Nature's Prophet. Two hits. There goes another kill. Now System takes the fall. And this is definitely, definitely GG. GG! As GG is called... By me. By you. That's all the GG that matters, even though you call GG like three minutes in sometimes. Yeah, man. Yep. I, I should pull the Nebula. Nebula, when I used to play Dota with him, and keyword used to, um, is that, what, like, you know, five minutes in, the score is one to four. We're one, and therefore, like, GG, oh, there's no chance we'll win this game. But Nebula have since got a little bit better. So shout <laughs> out to Nebula. Shout out to Nebula.
As, yeah, I think that was overall, I mean, what is it now? Uh, 65 kills in 32 minutes. Two kills a minute. This is the kind of game you want to see. Yep. And that's uh that's it for this game. For more GEST action, you should check out definitely that one game that I keep mentioning on B Ball's channel. Of course, you should check out SGG who's been casting a lot of Dota 1 stuff as well. And lastly, you should check out LD Dota because he broadcasts the entire tournament. So uh if you want more GEST action, it is gonna be on his YouTube channel. Of course, all of it's gonna be on DotaCommentators.com if you're too lazy to jump between channels and channels. But for now, this has we been just pick it. We should just make a GST thread. There's going to be too many games. Exactly. GST thread. There you go. But for now, this is uh, Pacific Palette versus Rocatrust. Pacific Palette will take that one. And uh, that's it from us. For B-Bowling and Luminous, hope you guys enjoyed this game. We are signing off. Gee, guys.